Hi guys, this is Amar and welcome to Network Engineer Stuff. So guys, uh, this is this video is basically the continuation of the video uh, on in which we were focusing on top 20 CCNA level interview question and answers. So in the part one, I think we completed till question number 10. So we'll continue with question number uh, 11. So the question number 11 says, what is the purpose of creating VLANs? So whenever you answer this question, guys, please do remember to mention this particular point that the main purpose of creating VLANs is broadcast control. So this is the main reason why we create VLANs. Again, there are multiple reasons like providing network security, segmentation, uh, flexibility, where a user can easily move from one floor to another floor. Uh, in the same VLAN, so the, the, these are all things we can mention, you should mention actually, but the most important thing you need to mention is the main purpose of creating VLANs is broadcast control. Now, uh, I have a diagram, you know, if you get an opportunity in your interview, you may explain with such kind of diagrams also, where we have a switch. And we have uh, here as I've shown this four PCs, PC0, PC1, PC2 and PC3. All these four PCs are in the same physical location. But they are separated with each other logically via VLANs. That is PC0 and PC1. They are in VLAN 10 and PC2 and PC3 are in VLAN 20. PC0 can communicate with PC1 and so PC1 can communicate with PC0. PC2 can communicate with PC3 and PC3 can communicate with PC2. But PC0 cannot communicate with PC2 because they are logically in different networks since they are part of different VLANs. So, such kind of explanation we can do, we can, we can we can give in our interviews with such diagrams. Now, the question can come that how can we communicate or how can we make it possible that PC0 and PC2 should communicate with each other? So the question to this answer is the next question that is what is meant by inter VLAN routing. So this point we have already discussed. Now when the host are in different VLANs and they want to communicate that communication can be the traffic must be routed between them. And this is known as inter VLAN routing. So whenever the communication is going to happen between VLAN, the traffic needs to be routed and this is known as inter VLAN routing and this is achieved by creating SVI or router on stick. Uh, here you can see I have also drawn this router. Now this router will act as router on stick and uh, this router will, will, uh, will make it possible that PC0 and PC2 can communicate with each other because the traffic is going to flow like this by this router to the switch to this PC. So the router on stick is going to do this inter VLAN communication. Let's move on to the next question that is autonomous system. Uh, and what is autonomous system? Basically autonomous system is a group of network or we can say it's a group of uh, networks and devices which comes under a single administration uh, control. I can give an example uh, like you know of a large ISP uh, let's say Tata Communications. Now this Tata Communications have multiple uh, networks and multiple devices in this networks. So this will come under a autonomous system and to represent this autonomous system we do have something known as autonomous system number that is ASN. Now Extend to this, an interviewer may ask you this question that what is ASN or uh, what are the uh, range of ASN. So you can remember this range of ASN. Now this ASN is basically a 16-bit binary number. So we can represent it as a 2 raised to 16 
uh, numbers which is equal to 65,536. So the range again goes from 0 to 65,535 uh, and uh, been 0 is uh, and uh, 0 is the first and 65,535 is, is, is the last ASN number. So this both of this are reserved I've mentioned over here. Whereas there are some ASN which are used for uh, private purposes and there are some ASN number which are internet ASN number which are public ASN numbers. So this is the range that is 1 to 64,511 are internet routing that is ISP AS and 64,512 to 65,534 these are private AS numbers. So you can again remember this AS numbers. Let's move to the question number 14. What is the difference between TCP and UDP? So the major difference between TCP and UDP is that uh, whenever you require a reliable connection, wherever you require a reliable data delivery, you will go for TCP and wherever you re require real time applications like uh, streaming and gaming, you will go for UDP because uh, TCP is connection oriented protocol it will have that a uh, three-way handshake in TCP will have three-way handshake because of which the connection oriented uh, uh, it is known as connection oriented protocols and which ensures your reliable and ordered delivery of the data the data have to be delivered the data will deliver in TCP but whereas in UDP it's a connectionless protocol there is no guarantee that the data will be delivered. So this is a major difference between a TCP and UDP protocols. What is the purpose of ACLs in networking that is access control list. Now access control list is something which are used as a filter or to use uh, uh, to, to control certain traffic and we can control this traffic on basis of a few parameters or few criterias as I've mentioned over here that you can control the traffic on basis of source IP or destination IP source port destination port number or protocol based filtering also you can apply in this diagram I have shown like you know this is a FTP server which I have now there are two there are there are the two users basically a user and administrator now this administrator have the access to this FTP server. Now as an administrator, I have to restrict this particular user of for accessing this FTP server. I can do so by using ACLs. I'll configure some ACL on this particular router defining that whatever traffic from this particular source user source is coming to this destination restrict it, deny those packets so that the users user cannot access this FTP server only administrator can access so I can do such kind of filtering work in my network and for which ACL is very useful let's move on to the next question uh, question number 16 what is ARP ARP is address resolution protocol this is basically a network protocol which is used to map a network layer protocol address that is IP address to a data link layer that is layer 3 address to layer 2 address basically ARP resolve this IP address that is layer 3 address to layer 2 address that is MAC address uh, you can see over here that you know this is this is for example an IP address 224.0.0252 now this is resolved to a MAC address this IP address is resolved to a MAC address this is basically a layer 2 address layer 3 from IP address to the MAC address is done by ARP. Question number 17. What is the metric in, in OSPF? Now the metric in OSPF is cost. This cost is inversely proportional to the bandwidth. Means if the bandwidth is higher, the cost will be less. And the cost will be less, the part will be better or it will be preferred. So 
दिस इज द कैलकुलेशन और मोस्ट ऑफ टाइम पीपल डू मिस्टेकनली आंसर दैट द मैट्रिक ऑफ द ओ एस पी बैंड विथ नो द मैट्रिक ऑफ द ओ एस पी एफ कॉस्ट एंड कॉस्ट इज इनवर्सली प्रपोर्शनल टू दैंड विथ कॉस्ट डिपेंड्स अपॉन बैंड विथ लेट्स फोकस ऑन द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट दैट इज क्वेश्चन नंबर एटीन वॉट इज पी जी पी बी जी पी इज इज द ओनली एक्सटीरियर गेट वे राउटिंग प्रोटोकॉल सो दिस इज द आंसर फॉर बी जी पी फॉर फ्रेशर और फॉर एंट्री लेवल इंटरव्यूज बिकॉज बी जी पी इज अ वास्ट टॉपिक यू नो एंड इट इज समथिंग विच 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 यू कैन टॉक ऑन आवर्स एंड विल ऑल्सो ऑल्सो रिक्वायर्स लॉट ऑफ एफर्ट्स एंड लॉट ऑफ hours basically to 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 learn this particular topic but for a fresher if somebody asks you what is bgp bgp is a protocol which which actually runs between two different autonomous system it's the only protocol which which makes it happen that you can run it between two different autonomous systems uh, now here you can see that you know this particular router r1 is in autonomous 100 and this particular router r2 is in autonomous 200 so uh, there is only one protocol which can run between them to exchange the routes is bgp so bgp is the only exterior gateway routing protocol question number 19 what is the role of a firewall in a networking now whenever we talk about firewall this picture do come in our mind that firewall basically wall it's a it's a wall between your your external network and internal network which basically protects your internal network that is your lan network or your uh, your organization network i could say from external that is public network it protects from the attacks which happens from the external network so it's basically a security device that is a firewall and this is is done because on firewall we do define some 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 rules and depending upon those rules firewalls will firewall will allow or it will restrict the traffic the last question what are the port numbers used by telnet and sss so the port number which is used by telnet is 23 and the port number which is used by sss is 22 most of the people who have done engineering they might have aware of this port numbers but port numbers are nothing but the services uh, uh, you know defined so whenever you are using ssh you want to uh, have ssh the port number this is basically you know i have also mentioned over here yeah these are the well known port numbers so uh, most of most of the interviews people do ask what is the port number of uh, um, let's say http uh, what is the port number of uh, dns so such kind of question is asked so you can refer to this particular table this has few well known port numbers so guys i'll stop here in this video uh, i hope that you like this part 1 and part 2 of this uh, of the of this video uh, i'll come up with more such interview based question and answers uh, videos i already have multiple so you can go and watch those videos as as well i have uh, dedicated videos on ospf pgp interview questions eigrp stp vlans ether channels and and many more knock knock in interview question and answers and many more stuff so you can go and watch those videos also uh, till then uh, you know do share this videos if you really like this videos do comment on this videos which is which is a uh, you know big motivational factor for youtubers like us to make more videos for you people uh, till then i'll stop here catch up you in the next video till then bye thanks and have a nice day thank you